We live? I think we are. Here we go. <laughs> That's a um, Iron Maiden tune right there. Just having some fun today, friends, with the bass, because guess what? If you play guitar, you can play the bass. No offense to bass players out there, because here's the deal. There is technique, and being just because you are a guitar player does not make you a bass player. So let me caveat the program with that by saying that just because you can play guitar doesn't mean that you're going to be a great bass player but it means that you have the capabilities and i'll show you what that means in a minute and we'll talk a little bit about playing bass today but mainly right it's i want to associate this to guitar so we're going to do a q a as well so friends welcome to thursday march the 26th lockdown the lockdown sessions this is fun um Kind of. We're indoors. It's super bright and sunny out today, as you can see. And I'm probably going to be getting out there, so we're probably not going to do a, a too terribly long broadcast today. But I thought this could be kind of fun for those out there that have a bass sitting at home, or you got a friend who has a bass, and you're like, hey, I would like to learn how to play bass. Boom. Okay. So, let's talk about it, and, and then we're also going to get to some questions as well, okay? Now, here's the deal. Let me, I just want to double check on something on this live broadcast here. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, I want to make sure that you have the same view that I think that you have. We'll get to some questions. Uh, we'll get to Q&A in just a minute as well. All right, here we go. Let's talk about it. So, on the guitar, the or on the bass guitar, these strings are E, A, E, A, D, and G. So just like the guitar, E, A, D, and G. The same notes, except they're one octave lower. What's an octave, Eric? Glad you asked. An octave is basically a pitch that is the same, that, that is the same, but it's either double the speed in frequency or half the speed in frequency. So when we're talking about frequency, we're talking about the vibration of something. In this case, the vibration is the string. And so on a guitar, if we hit the A string, it would sound like this. You know? Hold on. Okay, so that's the same pitch, whereas the bass is one octave lower. Now, why is that important? Well, it's super important because if there's a chord progression that's playing, let's say, a C, G, F, you know, chord progression playing chords, C, G, F, then we can also, on the bass, play C, G, F. And you don't need any other theoretical knowledge other than knowing the notes on the fretboard, which of course you know because you've gone through the beginner section of UGS, right? So literally, the only thing you have to know is the bottom four strings of the guitar. You have to know that the strings are E, A, D, G. And the musical alphabet works the same way on the bass as it does the guitar. 
all the springboards are the same. Springboards, if you don't know what that is, they're ways to get around the neck very, very quickly. It's basically like a hack that will show you how to get around this, the fretboard very quickly, whether on bass or, or guitar. If you wanna know more about that on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Springboards. So springboards would be, you know, zero, zero fret, E, A, D, G. And same thing with the 12th fret, E, A, D, G. That's helpful because if you want to know what these notes are around here, you don't have to count from the zero fret from the nut. You can count backwards from the 12th fret. Same thing with tuning. When you're tuning the bass, you tune at the fifth fret. And so if you're tuning the A string to the fifth fret of the E string, then you should know that that's an A. So if I wanted to know what this note is, I can use the same springboard techniques that I use on the guitar to say, okay, this is A, A sharp, B. I don't have to start from here and I don't have to go backwards from here. So there's a marker, here's a marker, here's a marker. You're probably not gonna play past the 12th fret on the bass. You could, I just did, uh, but that's Iron Maiden for you. So knowing those springboards are very helpful. The other really cool thing about the bass is that a lot of those tricks that I teach you, right, about like for instance, the, the number one video that I have going on right now is, um, is the whole, it's something about the weird trick, I'm trying to remember the title here, weird trick uh, to finding all the chords in any key. And you can use that same trick here. Uh, you have the one, the four, and the five. And here's the two, the three, and the six. If some of this doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. It's not because you're dumb. It's just because you don't, you hadn't done the work. You don't know the tools. You hadn't learned the tools. So uh, I'm giving those tools to you today for free. The first link that's in the description of this video. So one, four, five, uh, two, three, six. And then our seven is right back here. Watch that video if you want to know more about that. But essentially that works for any key. You can move this up to the key of A. And you got the same thing, one, four, five, the three most popular chords of all times. Thank you, Mike, for posting that weird trick to instant uh, chords in any key for learning and writing songs. So uh, one, four, five, and then two, three, six. It's the same thing, okay, but just on bass. Now, what is different about the bass than the guitar is the way that you should approach the instrument. Because unlike the guitar where, and I say should approach, as a rule of thumb, Bass players don't like guitar players playing bass. So sorry, bass players. But I'm not going to ravage the instrument like a lot of guitar players do. And what I mean by that is this. A lot of guitar players will approach the bass as if it's a guitar. And it's not. It's a different instrument. It should be respected as such, in my opinion. So playing chords stuff like that not that there's anything wrong with that that can sound really cool but for the most part when you play bass you're emphasizing the bass note of you know one two three four five so that sort of thing uh, you could do the third of the chord you could also walk the bass line as if you were outlining some of the chord that sort of thing Times you're playing one note at a time a lot of times you are <laughs> he answered while I was typing nice good Celeste glad you, glad I got to your question without looking at it uh, so another thing is a lot of times when you're playing bass what you want to do is it's a very percussive type of sound so or that's a lot of times what we're going for with with a bass sound is we're wanting this sound either with your finger you know using your finger like this or you could use a pick Okay. First, second finger, doesn't matter. Typically, you're not strumming, and you're usually playing one note at a time, and it's usually emphasizing the chord in some way or another. Okay. I'll get to your questions, because there's not much to it in regards to the mechanics, and as far as actually playing, uh, if you want to get some, some serious bass lessons, 
find a good bass teacher. Yes, a guitar teacher like myself could teach you at least the basics. I mean, I could teach the basics of uh, lots of instruments, piano and banjo and ukulele and that sort of thing. But when you, once you start outgrowing that teacher, so like if a guitar teacher is teaching you how to play bass, once you start outgrowing it, don't be afraid to go to a legitimate bass teacher because they're gonna approach the instrument differently than say a guitar teacher, a guitar player who plays, you know, his own bass tracks in the studio or, or what have you, or if somebody else, a buddy needs some bass lines laid down, I can say, yeah, I play bass, I do enough. But it's a reason why there's legitimate bass players as well. Okay, all right, so let's get into some, some questions here, and it could be about bass, it could be about ukulele, it could be about the uh, number system that we talked about the other day. The chords uh, could be about anything that's going on right now, meditation, uh, all that stuff. We have fun in these chats. So the only thing I do ask is that you keep it up, keep it very positive, because we've got, li I have literally like three administrators watching right now, and they will kick someone's ass out of here so quickly for being negative or just being a douche or whatever. So, so just don't do it. This is a really cool group of kids. I say kids, but I mean everybody. If you're 90, you're a kid to me. Everybody's a kid. So I'm a kid. Uh, so be cool and and everybody gets to have fun and stay in the chat, all right? Awesome, let's get to some questions. And like I said, it's a beautiful day out today, today and my wife and my son are itching to go outside and they just did a mandatory lockdown for the city of Franklin where I live, just south of Nashville. They did that last night, but that's lockdown like most, most of y'all have as well where it just means don't go to the mall and like hang out right just like if you need to go grab some groceries or some vitamins or something then do that so that's where we're at but it doesn't mean we can't go outside and be in the sun and i highly encourage you to do that to get out in the sun vitamin d zinc vitamin c vitamin a um, these are all things that really help with your immune system which not only for the current bit at hand but everything else like you should be taking your vitamins, you should be doing that stuff, you should be out in the sun. That stuff really, really, really helps to keep this stuff at bay. Okay, cool. All right, let's get into some questions. What is the chrome shield over the strings? Uh, Frank is asking, is uh, on this old style um, Fender jazz bass. This is what they did in, in, in the old school jazz basses. This was like a thing, man. Uh, so in the same way that you can find like an old uh, Telecaster. In fact, I have a 1967 Telecaster that has what they call an ashtray right over this part of the bridge. You can't mute the strings or anything. It comes off as well, which mine's off. Uh, but that was a thing that Fender did for a while. This was a thing that Fender did for a while, um, probably by the request of like three guys. And they said, well, that's a great idea. And it obviously wasn't a great idea because people don't use it. Some people do. Like, I'll actually rest my hand there a little bit. But if I don't have this on a guitar, I'm not resting it there. Usually resting it on a pickup or something like that. But other than it just being a plate, it doesn't really have, it's not doing anything, okay? Jack is saying, thanks from us vets. You, Eric, you effing rock. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much. Um, our veterans... U.S. veterans, I allow to be to come into the Unstoppable Guitar System for free. So if you're a veteran, go to yourguitarsage.com/veterans to find out more about that. Okay. Okay. The bass player is the one in a band, in my opinion, who keeps the time for the rest of the band. Is this correct? Fred is saying. Fred. That would be the drummer, but the bass player should be in sync with the drummer. But if your drummer's out of sync, you know, the, the more percussive a noise is, a sound, a guitar, a bass, a, a drum, the more percussive it is. And what we mean by that is a spike, a real sharp attack and a real quick decay, as opposed to a bass that's gonna hum like that for a long time or a guitar. The, the drums have a very sharp attack and a very short decay. And so because of that, it jumps out in the mix. So if that guy is out of time, 
the rest of the band is going to have a really hard time staying in beat, okay? So, but the bass player and the drummer should be very much in sync together. So, technically, you're correct, but more so than the bass player, the drummer should be the guy who's staying in time. How can I keep the pick from slipping out of my fingers? Been meaning to ask. Michael, get a thinner pick. And also, as you progress in your picking technique, as you practice more, you will get better at it. One thing that I suggest to everybody, anybody who wants better uh, pick technique, is to carry a pick around with you everywhere. And not in your pocket, but in your fingers. So if you're walking around the neighborhood today, if you're driving, if you're cooking, whatever, have a pick in your hand. You could be cooking with it, just make sure it doesn't fall into your, your, uh, your meal there. But nonetheless, if you keep it in your hand all the time, it's gonna be challenging and you're gonna have to keep up with it and you're gonna develop some techniques. You don't even have to be playing the instrument to actually get a really good picking technique, not picking technique, but holding on to your pick more, okay? Just like a child with a pencil, it's all over the place, right? But the more they hold it, the better they're, the easier it's gonna be for them, okay? Is a five string bass harder to play than a four string? No, you just have one more option. You have a low B string here, and that creates, uh, you know, you can go down further, you can go down lower, but a lot of bass players don't use it that often. But you could, and it doesn't make it harder. You're typically on the bass, you're only playing one note at a time anyhow, yeah. So, all right, I'm not sure this question is for me. Are you familiar with what Chef Michael Simon did for his inflammation? And have you been able to incorporate anything back into your food that you cut out for your program? Uh, how has it helped you? How has it helped you, Pally? Uh, Roy is saying, so I've talked to you guys before about this, that I used to have wicked arthritis. In fact, if you look at, um, here you go, here's my middle finger. You can see, number one, the nail's messed up. It's also bent. See how that finger is like jacked? Uh, same thing with my pinky, how it's jacked. I'm not bending that purposely. It's just like that. Uh, my thumb is jacked. Um, lots of, I've had lots of issues with my hands over the years. Dog bites and crushed in doors and... Uh, arthritis, I had arthritis really bad, uh, very badly, in when I was like in my 20s, teenager years. Uh, broke this finger, it never, I never got it set, so it's permanently bent backwards. And I have some other fingers that are also deformed. You can see this pinky and this thumb. Um, that was all because of arthritis. I was eating lots of animal products, like most of America does. Uh, cheeses, yogurts, milks, meat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all highly inflammatory foods. I don't care who you are, they're highly inflammatory foods. So I'm not gonna preach, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some science because I know lots of people who are in the chat and other folks who I talk with all the time, they have issues uh, with arthritis. And I can just tell you that I know because I've studied this since 90, when, when I really started running into these problems. Since 1990, I've been studying nutrition, more just like armchair, okay, I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I've sure been studying it a lot and testing a lot with myself, hacking, uh, before there was all this biohacking. I was biohacking in the 90s, just testing stuff all the time, right? And one thing that I found out was the less animal products that I ate, the more my body responded. And in fact, in 1990, I went completely vegan cut out all animal products and my body cured itself like within weeks. Arthritis went completely away. Yes, I still have deformed uh, knuckles because of that. I would have to probably have them replaced because the damage was done. Just like if you get an eye poked out or something, you can come, you know, cut out animal products. You're still going to have a poked out eyeball, right? So. Uh, so even though I have damage to my knuckles from back then, I don't have the inflammation anymore like I did, okay? Unless I cheat, and I'm typically not cheating with, with animal products. I'm, uh, I will, sometimes if I have like nightshade vegetables, those are also highly inflammatory, uh, grains. But it doesn't mean you, you have to cut out those things, but definitely cut back on them. 
Uh, my opinion, as far as animal products, from what I found out, is that because since the 90s, I definitely have brought some back in, and uh, and every time that I do, I have have had issues, have, have had inflammatory issues. But like the last five years or so, um, I've cut out almost all animal products. I will have humane eggs, if you don't know what that is. Study, uh, you can go down that rabbit hole if you really care to know about it. Otherwise, I won't explain it to you, but essentially it's the way that they handle the chickens that are making the eggs. Uh, if it's done humanely, I don't have a problem with that personally, but anything other than humane eggs, if you would see how those poor little animals are treated, uh, it's terrible, right? And my motto is, I don't want another being to be treated any less than I want to be treated. And that's how we all should be thinking. Otherwise, we're being selfish. And that's just the truth of it. Now, whether you abide by that is up to you. But to say that that's not true, that every being deserves kindness and respect and love and passion and, and, and all that rest of the stuff, uh, we'd be pretty low consciousness to think that that's not true. Wouldn't you agree? Um, so whether you, whether you abide by that is a whole nother story, but at least we should come to the place of truth and say such a thing, right? Okay. All right, so, um, so yeah, now the chat, uh, is the chat not working again? Because I'm seeing it move in one of these and then not the other, so I may have to reset here. Okay, how to do, someone's saying how to do slapping on the base. So this is another technique that's used a lot on the base. What you're doing is you're taking your thumb and you're popping usually some of these lower strings like the low E or the low A okay and then you so that's a, a pop and then a snap is when you take your your finger and you put it underneath the strings you pull up and so what's happening is that string is slapping against the base, the, the neck. Slapping against the neck of the base, and it creates that cool sound. Okay, and so snapping and popping, that's something that bass players will do. I'm not very good at it. I can, I can fake it a little bit, but that's what bass players do. It creates that really cool percussive sound used in funk a lot. Yeah. Einrich the Slapper. <laughs> um, Fred saying, God bless. Uh, always treat others the way you want to be treated and be kind to each other and help each other. Uh, makes for a better world and, and place. Yeah, I'm not super smart. I just know some basics and I know that kindness and love, uh, I know those are true. And I know that the world would be better if we do that more, if we are that more. I don't know a lot of constants. I don't know a, a ton of truths. I used to think that I know knew a lot of truths, and but now there's a, I have lots of questions, and that's okay. It's a good place to be. But I definitely know that being kind and bringing peace to the world and 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 doing something for the world is definitely going to serve the world better. And we're in this place, this unique place in the world right now, where we're actually. Uh, in some ways being forced to be introspective and to go inward and to be kind to each other and what have you. Because dear God, what would happen if we fell apart right now? That would not be good if we fell apart right now. So I believe we are being tested, whether it's by some external force or, or otherwise, we're being tested. And this is the time to step up and to be leaders and to be kind and to help others out. You know what I'm talking about. There's a million ways every single day that we can do this, even if it's just smiling at someone and you know, anything, anything to help. Uh, if I'm somewhat proficient at guitar, should I also be able to play the bass? Terry, yes. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, the strings are E, A, D, G, which are the same letter names as your guitar, E, A, D, G. So the, the notes are the same. They appear the same way. They're one octave lower. Now, you do have to get used to the big, thick strings. The neck is longer. The technique is different. But yes, technically, you should be able to play the bass. Uh, but 100% is a new instrument, so it's going to take... There, there's a learning curve to it, just like there would be anything else. Okay?
Deep Row is saying, what, what is your secrets about your guitar technique? Well, you know, I jokingly say secrets, and I guess they are a secret if you don't know what they are, right? Or there's a secret or a trick or a hack. I use those words a lot because if you don't know what it is, and then someone shows you something that really helps you leap forward um, massively in your playing, then yeah, that's really helpful. But in regards to my secrets, there are no secrets, really. They're just things that one person might know and somebody else may not. So I don't really have any secrets. Um, if I have anything that I can bring to the world, I think it's that I can show them how to play guitar in a step-by-step -step way that will absolutely help them, especially getting folks from that beginner stage into intermediate and advanced playing because that is the most volatile time and that's what I, I, what I emphasize. I mean, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, the same program that you guys can get started in for free, you can join that movement, the first link that's below the description of this video. Um, I take people from the beginner section, I mean from baby beginner, never touch the guitar, up to advanced level playing, thousand something videos, that's just within my program. That doesn't, that's not including the 1300 something videos that I have on YouTube that can help you as well. So I feel like that's one thing that I can bring to the world is doing that, okay? Uh, but no real secrets per se, unless you don't know them and I can show them to you, you know? Never really thought much about playing bass. Are there separate tabs for bass or do they typically play freestyle with the root notes? Larry, there are definitively tabs for bass. So if you go to Ultimate Guitar, on the left there, you know, you have Pro, and you can click on the bass section there and mute or and solo that and what have you. There's definitively um, or definitely there are bass lines, specific bass lines. But at the same time, you can just listen and if you or watch another watch a guitar player and if they have if they're playing a G chord, you could play a G or a B or a D, you know, the, the notes out of that chord, you could play this, okay? What is the difference between a P bass and jazz bass and split pickups? What bass type uh, do I need for rock or metal tracks? Larry, uh, so I'm probably not the guy to ask, but from my understanding, a jazz bass, this is a jazz bass, you can get a P bass sound out of it. You can get a precision sound out of it. But you can't get a you can't get a jazz sound out of a precision bass. That's what's been told to me by other bass players. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know enough about basses. I play them when I need to, and that's it. So that's the difference. A, a, a jazz bass is more diverse as, instead of a precision bass. Either one of them works for rock and metal. Any of them work fine. As far as split pickups, I'm not sure what the difference is there other than you know, you're know you bringing a portion of the pickup one way or the other, either a, a darker sound for the bass notes or a brighter sound for the, for the treble strings, okay? It's not gonna be that much of a difference though. You're not gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. That is what's missing in this world. We need more old school respect. It's true, it's true. I think what happens a lot of times is as new generations emerge, um, I get it, there's this idea of like, we need to change the old way, the old way is broken, and I get that there is some degree of that that should be held in check. Our old ways should be held in check. But for the new generations that are coming up, Fine, test them. Don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's reasons why people have done things for tens of thousands of years a certain way. Um, and they're not all just because. A lot of times they're because they work. So I agree with you, Timothy. I think both should be considered uh, and the end of these, you know, respect and old school ways of doing things, they should be considered and they should be tested because it's not, you're not just born into the world and all of a sudden you're so enlightened that you can tell everybody else what to do and that you should, you should follow that, right? I agree with you. I think most people do too. I think even uh, younger folks would agree with that. 
to some degree. The ones that are listening, the ones that are conscious. Okay, what's more uh, difficult, acoustic guitar or bass? Well, the acoustic guitar is going to have more strings. You're typically playing more than one string at a time, whereas bass, you're only playing typically one note at a time. So, you know, as a rule of thumb, I would say the acoustic guitar. Someone's asking about headphones. I. Uh, I probably have them in my kit store, which you can find a link for that below. I, I couldn't give an ex I couldn't give uh, an example for you off the top of my head. I've got many different types of headphones. How's a five string bass tuned? Uh, how would it be used in a, a song differently from a four string bass? Jeff, not that differently. So the bass is tuned like this: E A D G, which is the first four strings of your guitar. E A D G. And on a five string bass, you have another string that's at the bottom here, and it's a B string. So if you've ever seen a seven string guitar, the seven string guitar has a low B string on it. So similarly, that's what they've done with a bass. So how would it be differently played in a song? Not that different, it's just that if there's a low B in the song, you know, you could play that with that five string bass, but you wouldn't be able to play a low B with a four string bass. It doesn't have a low B on it. Make sense? Okay, good. Real bass players read bass clef, national numbers, and play by ear, question mark, all. So bass players, and you know, when we say real bass players, there are plenty of great bass players that don't read music. There are plenty of great bass players that don't read the national number system and plenty of great bass players that don't play by ear. But you'll probably need something in order to, to do that, either playing by tab or playing by ear, reading bass clef, knowing the national number system, reading bass clef um, music, yeah, for sure. Andy liked the Ain't Talking About Love lesson. Thank you, Andy. Which is the best audio interface? I don't know about the best, uh, the word best is overused in today's world. There's what's best for you, and I find that the Focusrite Scarlet series is a really great is a really great series of audio interfaces. I have several of them, and they work great, and they're really affordable. Remind me what triads are. I came to learn arpeggios with acoustic, but what were triads in bass? It's the same thing on the guitar. A triad is a three note chord, the one, the three, and the five of the chord. The one and the three of the five of the scale, the one and the three of the five of the chord. That's pretty much all I can say with that without getting really deeply into a, le into a lesson. And I probably have a lesson for that on YouTube. I would search your guitar sage triads, okay? Victor Wooten, somebody said Victor Wooten, yeah, he's an amazing bass player, and in fact, Victor Wooten, check this out, my first gig ever in Nashville, my first gig ever in Nashville was at a place called the Grapevine Cafe. It's not there anymore. Nashville's changed so much, I don't even know where all these old clubs that I used to play in are. Some of them are just knocked down. Uh, it, it, Nashville's changing so quickly. But I played at the Grapevine Cafe with a, a famous songwriter by the name of Troy Johnson, who we used to have, we had several bands together. One was called Me and Eric, another one was the Cosmic Love Bunnies. We just had a couple projects back in the day. And we were playing out as this Me and Eric, I was the Eric part, and we were playing, first time ever playing in Nashville, and real small crowd, and I look out, and Victor Wooten is sitting five feet out in front of me. And it was literally like maybe like five people in the crowd. Victor Wooten was one of the people there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Victor Wooten, right? Amazing, amazing player. If you don't know who he is, look him up on YouTube. Amazing bass player. So can you use a guitar tuner on a bass? Most of the time you can. Some of them are limited where they can't hear that low frequency. But most of the time you can.
Daniel saying, suggestions for learning country style leads. Yes, I would start with a simple solo, um, a simple solo, you know, something that moves you, but that is simple. L learn some solos from uh, country rock albums that are out right now, but find something that's your favorite, learn it lick for lick, note for note, uh, using tablature. That's how I would suggest doing it. Eric, do you remember the nightclub club called 101st Airborne in the 90s? Yes, I think I, re I remember seeing that maybe with a little bird on it, right? With a little like eagle's face on it, uh, eagle's head on it. I think I remember that, but don't know much about it. Which strings do you prefer on your bass? Guitar, I use flat wounds. Just curious uh, to what you suggest for coded or non-coded and brands you prefer. Thanks. So Fred, I've been playing bass, not a lot, but, but on and off since about the time I started playing guitar. I've always had a bass. And I literally in my whole life have never changed a bass string ever on any of my basses. How about that? I usually sell them before I would have to change the strings. So I wouldn't know what's on them, but they're not flat wounds. I can tell you that the first bass that I had had flat wounds, had that really cool dark tone to it. Uh, but I haven't used um, I haven't used that in forever. So, all right. Do you curl your fingers the same uh, as a regular guitar? I see many flat fingers playing bass. You can use more of the pad of your finger when playing bass. It's totally acceptable. You're not playing chords. And at the end of the day, like I said, if you wanna play with the pads of your fingers while playing guitar, that's totally acceptable. If you can play the part, if you can play the chords and everything else, if you can't, then obviously you need to change your technique. So the people, a lot, of, it seems that some people are concerned with technique when they don't need to be. Technique is, you want to sharpen your technique if it's causing problems in your playing. But if it's not causing problems in your playing, then there's no problem, okay? So especially with bass, you're not playing but one note at a time. You're wanting to mute the other notes, so it's totally acceptable. Cool? Huh. Okay, so Matt's saying, so, so I, I'm really interested in what Matt is saying because I have several, several folks in my circle and actually woke up at, at 6 a.m. this morning uh, regarding this. Uh, anyhow, Matt wrote this. He said, did you know about the synchronized practice of TM, uh, Transcendental Meditation Program, due to uh, what's going on right now? Everyone is practicing at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily, basically to increase the consciousness and positive energy globally. I know some people think this is total crap, and then there's a ton of people that are watching right now that would agree with this, talking about consciousness. Let me, uh, let me just say, here is an example of global consciousness. On 9-11, God, am I going to go down this rabbit hole? On 9-11, well, let me back up a little bit. There are these computers that are around the world that specifically spit out a massive amount of ones and zeros. They spit out binary code. And that same computer quantifies how many ones and zeros are, are happening at any one point. There's lots of these. I don't know, maybe like a dozen of them in different places in the world. Maybe more than that now, I don't know. But it's, they're doing this at such a high speed. They're basically coin flippers, okay? Electronic coin flippers. As one would assume, if you have a, a bit of science, scientific background of experiments and, and what have you, the more times you flip a coin, the more this will go to a 50-50 ratio, okay? At first, if, you're flip, if you flip the coin 10 times, you might get seven heads and three tails, right? But if you flip that coin seven million times, it's probably gonna be much closer to 50-50, okay? So these computers are doing this all the time. And what they've found is that when there is something big that happens in the world, like when 9-11 happened or when the tsunami happened, I think in, in Thailand, uh, when these big catastrophic events happened, these computers, these computers swayed 
one way or the other. Meaning, this 50-50 that they were seeing all the time changed before the event actually happened. Okay, now, I'm a huge skeptic, huge skeptic. So if you're like the, the part of me that's a huge skeptic, you would probably say to yourself, well, that's probably just coincidence. Cool, right, but we have scientists looking at this saying, uh, this is a very, very strange phenomenon that's happening. We can't explain it. So, so do your own searching on that. Uh, but here is what they were saying, they were suggesting, what some people were suggesting, is that there's something else happening, whether magnetically or consciousness-wise, throughout the entire world that might be bending these computers to, to go one way or the other. I think that's quite interesting. And so what a lot of people are saying, I am a firm believer of this, that if I evoke hatred in my heart, massive amounts of hatred, I mean just go to the core and just be as hateful as possible in my heart, if I do that, it will affect the world. And if I go into my heart and I create the most passion as possible, the kindness, just love and care for, for fellow beings, for all beings, and I really conjure that up in my consciousness and in my meditation, when I go out into the world, it will manifest in my hands, it will manifest in my smile, on my face, everything that I do. I know this because I've lived both of these lives and still do every single day. I mean, I'm constantly struggling with how can I become a better person and at the same time not having the discipline that I should in order to, to, to be all that I know that I could be. Just like going to the gym. Right? You, you have to physically work out in order to grow your muscles. It's not just a matter of thinking about it. So anyhow, what Matt's saying here is that there is this consciousness, which I 100% agree with, and that people are, are meeting whatever at their own little time in the world, 8 a.m., 6 p.m., whatever, different time zones, doesn't matter. But it's this, it's this getting up and doing this thing that is uh, bringing consciousness together. So whether you believe that or not, I 100% believe that sort of thing. I do. All right. Like birds before an earthquake, right? Or, uh, yeah, like birds before an earthquake, or they said when that whole tsunami happened that all those animals ran up this hill. Many animals ran up. They ran up to the hills, and then here comes this giant wave. Like there's something that happens. Maybe it's just a slight vibration that you and I can't pick up on, right? We talk about people being aware in ways that other people can't. Maybe like someone could hear, they could hear the same chord that you and I hear, but the, what one person is able to decipher it and another one's not. So this whole idea of being able to tap into something that other people can't is not unusual at all. Uh, I talk about a guy that I went to school with who had perfect pitch, and yet I could play any chord on my instrument, even one that was completely dissonant, and he could name every single note that was in that chord. He had something called perfect pitch, what we call perfect pitch. And so he had a consciousness or a, an ability to decipher something that I wasn't able to decipher, or at least in that moment I wasn't able to decipher it. Maybe it's something I could develop. So why couldn't this be for a million other things here? Ted C, huge skeptic here. I'm with you, Ted, giant skeptic. Probably the biggest skeptic there is. But I'm also a skeptic enough to know that just shutting off any idea of possibilities is not being a skeptic, that's being an idiot, right? So I know you're not that, Ted, and neither am I. So. Uh, so we want to play devil's advocate and if we're being open and we're strong beings We should be able to be challenged in our faith at whatever it is. I grew up as a as a, a Christian fella and Later on in life started questioning some things and had a lot of my Christian friends and family and what have you really go against me because uh, They thought that what I was doing or, or, or believing in or questioning was blasphemous but here's my thought on it is that uh, God or whatever, consciousness, all, sh can be questioned. It's big enough to be questioned, just like we talked about at the beginning of the program. Why not question all things uh, with an open mind? And then once it tests positive, then we can go, cool, that's, that, one, that one is true, you know, or it looks 
appears to be true, but I think it would be quite close-minded, even as a skeptic, for me to just go, oh, well, that's not true. And with most skeptics, I see that with Skeptic Magazine and all this stuff, people uh, become so, uh, they just don't believe anything. And they just become so idiotic that it's so predictable. They're like, well, he's not gonna believe anything. Uh, so I'm not like that. I'm a skeptic, but at the same time, I entertain any idea. What do you got? Show me what you got and let's talk about it. If it's idiotic, I'll, I'll say I think it's idiotic, right? Yeah. Human animals as opposed to non-human animals. Yep. In a three-piece, how can a bass player compensate for lack of a rhythm guitar player? That's a great question, Kyle. And this is where we're getting into, and I haven't been out in public. My hands are clean, so I can scratch my eye. Um, no one's been to the house in like over a week. And my eye itches. Uh, in a three-piece band, how can a bass player compensate for a lack of rhythm uh, guitar player. So you will see lots of bands do this, right? Andy Summers did this. Eddie Van Halen did this. There's lots of players who didn't have a rhythm guitar player. And so they filled in all the spaces. And a bass player can do this too. Uh, how a bass player might do this is they might play more than one note at a time. Maybe they're playing uh, a third or a fifth or a seventh or a ninth or something like that in their chord, or maybe they're walking that bass line, maybe they're getting more busy. So this comes naturally a lot of times when you're recording because you'll play something and there's just like this big empty space. And as a player, we wanna fill that up a little bit with some sort of call and response type of thing, you know? Check out ZZ Top, right? And they do a lot of overdubbing, lots of people do overdubbing in the studio, which means you lay another guitar part down. Um, but when you're doing that live, you, you have to do that by just playing, you know? <laughs> that's a funny, that's a funny question. Do you, you think God is stumped by our questions? <laughs> I love that. No kitty cat today. No. Yeah, it's called Rush. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Getty Lee, for sure. Yay, Scott's mind is open to the possibilities. I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful place to live. When I've gone, when I went through my changes, because I've done so many changes in my life, as I've done my changing from within, and really just presented more questions than anything, what I found out was that the questions were actually a relief that I actually didn't have to know everything. I didn't have to know this or that about politics and know this or that about God or about the eternity or things that how would anybody ever know, right? And that was such a relief to me to not have to know those things and to just be, to, to surrender to, um, just to surrender to that, you know? Oh, love that. Thank you, Emmy. All these concepts and thoughts can help you uh, play guitar if there's an intentional application. And I'm sorry for those that think that I'm going off on the rails here on a crazy train, just talking about stuff. But hey, we're in a really unique point in life here, and I understand it if you want me to just stick to guitar. If you do, put a guitar question in there, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll answer those questions. But um, lots of people have these have these other questions as well. We might as well, we're here every day right now with you guys, so let's talk about some of this stuff. Is lower action on a bass an advantage? It's, it's an advantage if you wanna play easier, if you wanna play lighter, yes, it is. I think this is great to just sit and talk. I agree, Evan. Who am I? Who am I? That's a great question, Philip. I am a being, I'm pretty sure I'm here, in the, in the universe right now, I'm pretty sure this is not a dream. I think this part right now is not a dream in many ways. And I'm a being who wants to become, have a higher consciousness. I wanna become kinder. I wanna be more filled with love. I wanna be addicted to love, like the old song. I wanna be passionate about growing. I wanna be passionate about giving and I want it to
Hey, hey, we're back. <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry. Uh, I was like, ah, poo. All right, there you go. <laughs> A bunch of people dropped out. That's okay. That's all right. Let's get real, man. Um, what do you want? What do you want to know? Let's let's talk about it. We're back. Do I ever focus on flamingo flamingo guitar? I don't know. I know what flamenco guitar is, but flamingo guitar. That's cool. Flamingo guitar. Just a big pink shrimp eating guitar. What are some of my favorite books on enlightenment? One that really changed my life is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Um, the Bible for me, for many, 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 many years, a uh, very inspirational book, still is, but as I started questioning more, it became very complicated to me, or some of it was, like Proverbs and stuff like that, very simple, very obvious, very, uh, you know, usable stuff every day, but then some of the other stuff just confused me, so I... I was like, I gotta have a book that I understand that I can conceptualize and put into real practice. No offense to those that love the Bible. I love it too. I think there's some great things about it. Uh, the Power of Now was a super powerful book for me. The Giant Within, or Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. If you guys haven't read that book, that's like Tony Robbins 101 stuff and it is awesome. I can still go back to that book. Very, very powerful stuff will truly help you to understand uh, how absolutely unstoppable, how unlimited you are as a being. And friends, if there's ever a time in this world to know this, it's right now. You've got to know this. Why? Because I need you. Because the world needs you. The world needs more leaders. The world needs you to step up. The world needs me to freaking step up. Because there's a ton of people that won't step up. So they need people like you and me to step up, step out, say the truth, lead the whole nine yards. Um, those are two super powerful books for me. Um, the Alchemist was another good one. Obviously fictional, but just filled with analogies and truth there, you know? Is there an acoustic bass you would recommend? I have a Kala, I think it's a Kala acoustic bass, and I love that. It's fretless, has nylon strings, it's about that big, it's just like a, this little mini bass, and it's awesome, I love it. Uh, you don't have to answer, Eric, but I was curious on your thought about legal cannabis. I was in bands and never did drugs my entire life, but in the last few months, I've tried weed more and changed my stance. Evan's saying. Um, I think that, you know, obviously anything illegal is illegal. Um, and there's tons of things that are illegal that I don't think should be illegal. But nonetheless, they're illegal, so you can still get put in jail for it. But uh, from my studying of cannabis, is I don't. There's no reason why it should be illegal. It doesn't make any sense that it should be illegal. And if you are really offended by this, it just means you haven't studied it. And I apologize. I don't mean to trigger anybody, but I've I've watched so many documentaries on this uh, and read about this, and the whole illegalization of cannabis happened because of, of, of fear of just people being so scared that people were going to be overtaken by this uh, herb that people have been using for tens of thousands of years, like in every single culture. And then one day, President Nixon gets whispered into his ear that this thing is going to kill the youth of America and it's going to kill everybody. It goes illegal in the USA and then goes illegal around the whole world. Crazy. So that's my thought on it. I think it's ludicrous but it's still illegal which just means it's illegal all right yeah indeed yeah 
Reefer Madness, right? Did you ever see this movie, Reefer Madness, where where oh, people are smoking weed and they're going crazy and they're killing each other and stuff? No one in the history of ever has killed anybody smoking weed. It's never happened. They'll eat your cookies. They'll eat all your cookies up. Yes, that's true. But uh, but it, it, if it does anything, it's going to make you super chill <laughs> and you're going to be hungry, right? Yes, check out Harry Anslinger. That's the guy I'm thinking of, right, in his department that made it, made it controlled in the first place. So the reason that, um, golly, I'm losing people left and right. Sorry. Uh, yeah. The reason that they said it was a controlled substance is because they said it had zero medical use and that it was highly addictive. Both are not true. Cannabis is not only not addictive, it's also amazing for uh, lots of things like inflammation and uh, PTSD and a bazillion other things. So all this is, inform this is old information. So if this sounds new to you, then you got to like do a little studying because this has been out for like a, quite a while now, several, many years, you know. I was finger style technique on bass. So, uh, so finger style on bass, you know, a lot of times people will use just the first finger, but you can use the second finger as well, especially if you're doing like a, or three fingers if you're doing like a triplet. do this thing where he will go one, two, three, four. He, he, uh, Jeff Cox, which is an amazing bass player who I went to college with. He's a professor here at a local university. University. He showed me this trick where he would go, uh, and I'm not good at it, but he would go one, two, three, and then bring his second finger up, and he, that's how he'd get four. One, two, three. There's lots of different ways, lots of different techniques. You can just use your first finger, you can use your thumb, you can slap, right? You can pop, pulling out, you can use a pick, many different ways. Someone's asking, I'm thinking about replacing my strings on my guitar. Have you got a video on that or offhand recommendation? I do. I've got several videos for that. So check those out on, on YouTube. Just search, uh, just search your guitar stage, changing strings, okay? Steve Compton saying, most, ba most bass players, uh, instructors recommend using two fingers and to alternate them. It it's true. Oh, by the way, friends, two things, two things. Tomorrow, we're going to drop a new video tomorrow, all right? It's Thursday, right? Yeah, we're going to drop, I'm so lost on the days here. Tomorrow, we're going to drop a new video. I think, I think I told the guys at, at noon we're going to do this. I don't know. Just look out for a... Just look out for a bit, a, uh, an email from me. Uh, watch social and what have you, and I'll let you know when it is. But we're going to premiere a video tomorrow on the Killers. So it's the Killers Top Riffs. We're going to do that tomorrow, and we're going to go live tomorrow, and I'm going to try to have my wife on here. We're going to talk about songwriting. Uh, the gal who did all this business in here with all these, like, uh, you know, all, all those accolades right up there. Uh, Gold records, platinum records, and what have have you. That's my my lovely bride, who is so talented and hot. 
My thoughts on coated strings. Uh, coated strings will last a long time because they're coated and so they're not susceptible to corrosion and that sort of thing. Oh, thank you, Fred. Thank you so, so kind. How often do you change the strings? I don't change strings on my bass at all. Like I said, I just don't change strings on my basses. I don't need to. I got I have two basses right now and I just never change. I rarely play them. So but when I do, I I don't have to change the strings on them hardly ever. And then as far as my guitars, I have my guitar tech now do that twice a year, uh, one time in the spring, one time in the fall, and the rest of the time uh, cuz I've got lots of guitars so I can play them often and still not wear out the strings, etc. Okay. Can I slap? Yes, I did, we did some slapping a little bit earlier, but, you know, just a little bit. Yes, Mrs. Guitar Sage, yeah. BJ saying, Eckhart Tolle, Dr. Wayne Dyer, uh, Deepak Chopra are excellent authors if anyone is interested in further knowledge of consciousness and meditation. I agree. All three of those guys I have listened to, they all have great things to talk about. And when we're talking about consciousness and meditation and, and that sort of thing, it's... It's another level, man. It's like, because we can't use our five senses to understand it, a lot of people will dismiss it. But if you've ever woken up from an absolutely terrifying nightmare, if you've ever had such a beautiful dream or whatever, uh, you know that you do not have to be using your senses to have your mind, your brain, your soul, whatever it is, ignited and be in a situation that either brought you fear or brought you joy or whatever, right? So we know this from just like, just like thinking. I will find myself oftentimes thinking about something and then time will go by and I'll be like, wow, like that was like a movie, like I was sitting there in a movie. Sometimes it's not the best thought in the world and so other times it is a great thought. Uh, when it's not a good thought, I'll catch myself and I'll say, hey bud, shift gears here. Because we can do that, especially in times like now, if we're buying, you know, buying too much into social media and seeing, getting all the stimuli, it might make us a little wacky and a little fearful and what have you. So, for, so for the skeptics out there that don't believe it, I too am a skeptic. Like I said, I've done a full circle with so much of this stuff. And uh, there's so much that we don't know about. And if we don't know about lots of stuff, then how can we, as a scientist or as a skeptic or anything else, just completely dismiss something? Completely dismissing something as a scientist or a skeptic is basically raising your hand and saying, I'm a complete idiot and I'm not open to the possibilities. That's what a skeptic is saying when they completely dismiss something right away or a scientist if they do that. Uh, so a good scientist should test some, something, okay? They should test it. And we should be doing that ourselves, uh, playing devil's advocate and saying, maybe this is true. Let's see what this is about. Okay. Hey, what kind of movies have you been watching these days? I need some good suggestions. Here's a movie I all want you to watch right now. Here's a movie that you gotta watch. I think it's on Netflix. It's called Happy. H-A-P-P-Y. Happy. Uh, that's the one I, I, I prescribed today. Watch that movie. Oh, when you get done watching that movie, you're gonna be like, what up, life? Like, it is beautiful. Very, very deep movie, and, and yet easy, watch it, happy. Um, uh, thank you, Frank Doherty, exactly. There's no such thing as a settled science. So I have a buddy, real close friend of mine, who used to be hardcore Christian, now he's hardcore hardcore atheist and when he was a Christian 
uh, that was his religion, and he was very preachy about it and very, I know the answer, I know the answer, I know the answer. Now he's hardcore atheist, and that's his new religion. And he knows the answer, he knows the answer, he knows the answer. And he's so dogmatic about stuff all at the same time. I could see him growing. In fact, he's helped, he's helped enlighten me with my walk in faith and in questioning and everything else in many ways, and I owe a, a debt of gratitude to him. But at the same time, like that's his new religion, and he's so dogmatic about it. And uh, for the most part, sometimes he's open to things. But, uh, but we talk about science all the time, because he'll say, well, no, we know this, we know blank. And I'm like, cool. Well, once upon a time, science, through science, we said we knew blank, but now that's changed. So we can't always go on, yes, we can go on science as a, as a, you know, in theory, but there's been so much science that has changed over the years that we can't really say that accurately. Yeah, science can be as much as an ism as anything else. I 100% agree. Eric, Harvard's university course on happiness is being offered online for free right now. What? Joe, Strobe, would you put that link in, uh, can you find that and put that in the description or put that in the chat right now? Because that would help me. I would love to look at that later and I know other people would as well. And in fact, like literally right now, I'm going to look up, I'm just going to open up another tab so that I have that for later. But, um, Harvard course on happiness and if you would put that in there it is okay in demand and it's for free right now you're saying beautiful love it I'm gonna watch that thank you so much so back so uh, only until recently here happiness was not a subject that one could study you could study depression because science said, this is a real thing. So here you go, going back to science again. Happiness is not a real thing. Depression is, we know, we can hear, look, we can judge the brain right here. This guy's getting depressed, because see this chemical leaking in right here? He's getting depressed. And then, so there was this whole science, which there is still, on depression, on the negative aspects of the way that we think. But there was nothing on the happiness side of it, on the positive side of it. Friends, let me tell you, as a guinea pig of myself. I have been in all different levels of this. Right now, uh, if, if where, this is my depression of where I used to be, you know, uh, I don't know if I was considered clinical or anything, but I can tell you that uh, I couldn't sleep at night. So many things going through my mind. What was happening in the world? What was happening to animals? What was happening to children? What was happening to this, that, and the other thing? It was just spiraling in my mind. I couldn't sleep at night. And I realized, that's when I, when, I, when I said, I've got to do something about this. I'm going to go mental. That's when I decided to go to, to that first Tony Robbins conference. And that, so that's where I'm at today. And this is the peak of where I've been, of my understanding and my consciousness or whatever. Right now, I'm probably right here. Okay? So definitely so far away from here. But, I'm, but this is bothering me because I know what I need to do to get to this level again. And by the way, this is an infinite level. You can, go, you can keep going up as the gurus that I follow will, will constantly say. Uh, there's an infinite amount of up that you can go. Uh, but it doesn't just happen. It requires you to do things. Uh, cleaning up your diet, cleaning up your thoughts, um, getting closer to nature, getting closer to yourself, you know, going inward, all these things. And all that being said, this whole study of happiness is a real deal now. And there are chemicals that can be released when you do things like work out, when you do kind things for somebody, when you produce content for the world. Uh, I mean, I'm not just doing this so I can keep the lights on. I love doing it. I love to pr present a new video and to help people move forward in their playing so that they can play the killers or, or, or Smashing Pumpkins or to play bass or whatever. Like, I love that stuff. So uh, this is a real thing. It's accessible to you. It's accessible to me. We can change our consciousness. Don't think that because you're depressed that you're stuck in being depressed. I've been in that mode before. When you're there, you think that that's all there is. It's like it shrouds over you, and now this is all you see. You can't see beyond that. Uh, I've, in relationships, I've done this before, where you're in a relationship, and you, you're in a fight, and like literally, my mind will be like, we're always fighting. We always fight. 
And then once I'm out of that, I'm like, dude, we hardly ever fight. And that is the truth of it as opposed to the other. But when you're in it, when you're just in that depression, it just makes you feel like it's, it's so real. But um, it's an illusion. I said this the other day, right? So much of life is an illusion. It is what we're making it out to be with our minds. So much of that, you know? Yeah. You know, uh, you proved the point. A little self-honesty can change your entire life. Yes, it's true. Here is what... I love that you guys are jumping in here with me. I could talk about this stuff all day long. For those that, um, that are frustrated with me not talking about music right now, I apologize. I think more folks are talking about this other stuff right now. And so I apologize if you wanted to talk more about bass and, and guitar. We, we can still just ask the questions there and I'll look for it. But right now, it seems like this is something that we need. So we're here, right? Here's what, Mir what uh, the dictionary Miriam has to say about science. is knowledge system of knowledge covering general truths or the operation of general laws, especially as obtained in the testing through scientific method. And I agree with that. There must be testing uh, because... You know, we don't want to throw our intellect away. That's some. That's a great tool that we have. Unfortunately for humankind, we have just put way too much weight on technology and way too much weight on intellect. That's book sense, and it's been lost many, many, many times over, over millennia. Uh, so it's something that can go away very quickly, but consciousness is something that continues on through time. So for instance... Uh, Take whatever um, platform you want to take as far as kindness. Maybe, uh, you know, me with I love animals. I love, uh, I love kindness. I love uh, the, the idea of being kind to beings and that sort of thing. Uh, that's today. Someone might say, well, that's because, you know, it's trendy now or something like that or whatever. And it's like, mm, maybe you could say that. There might be some degree of truth to that. But I can guarantee you that... that 20,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, someone saw someone be unkind to an animal and without even having the words to say it, something pricked their spirit and made them say, that's not right. This is why as a child, if you beat a dog in front of a child, there's something innately that knows that that's not right. Or if you beat a cow or if you chopped its head off or you did something like this. There's something innate in us as a child before we learned how to be, have a stiff upper lip and all these other things, uh, we knew the truth. And so then as an adult, as a farmer, if you, uh, you know, take an animal's life or something like that, they learn to be cold. They learn to turn that mechanism off. But here's the deal, not without a consequence because that is our true being is to be kind. Our true being is to help and to, and to be kind and to, and to help the world. It's not the other. Uh, that is the illusion. Uh, James said, uh, Jesus Christ may not, may not, but some of the people that follow Christ are in some sort of delusion. Yeah, indeed. So this is where, I mean, that, I agree with that, right? So like uh, the historical Jesus that, that many of us know and love, the stories of, of Jesus, uh, I mean, dude seemed like super amazing. Uh, possibly God for those, uh, for those that believe that. And I don't know where I stand on that. I got no, no science or anything to stand on that. But my uh, great part of my life, I have believed that. And I don't know what I believe now. I, I don't not believe it. And I don't believe it. I just don't know. Uh, my hands are up in the air and I'm like, uh, teach me God or Jesus or universe or whatever. Like, show me, guide me. I want to know. Um, and at the same time, I don't have to know. Uh, but, uh, you know, in any religion, in any non-religion uh, there are people who represent a specific sect that don't act like maybe the person that started that sect or whatever like buddhism right like like buddha like dude was a pretty peaceful dude right i'm sure there are buddhists that aren't very peaceful so 
And let's get back to music. And, and music is from the heart, right? Once you learn the mechanics and you learn some basic bits like that, which you don't even need to learn the mechanics. If you watch my, my Instagram from this morning, um, on my stories, I posted a bit of my, of my um, son. He was playing Star Wars on the piano. And I thought that was really cool um, because he was just playing it by ear from his heart, right? He doesn't know the mechanics. He doesn't know what notes he's playing. Uh, Roy, thank you so much. A little goes a long way. Just a smile uh, makes me want to go out and help someone. Your kind words are great. Love all your photos. It's like I'm on vacation. Give little ninja a hug from us. Love you, bro. Thank you so much, Roy. Super kind, bud. I love this prayer. Whether you believe in God or not, the serenity prayer, uh, prayer of St. Francis, uh, Sukbir Sekhan, just Put, uh, just posted this. God grant me this serenity to, serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. If you, if you uh, have been to AA, you have heard this prayer. Listen to this. God grant me this serenity to accept the things I cannot change. There's lots of things that we cannot change, at least in this moment right now. There's Somewhere in another country, uh, an animal or a child being harmed. I, I can't see it. I can't help it. So, I mean, that's legitimate. I can't actually do something right now at this moment. So, that's legit. Uh, courage to change the things I can. Uh, I would like to be have a stronger mind. I would like to be a stronger leader. I would like to be stronger in, when, in my muscles, in my faith, in my ability to to be kind to someone who's shouting in my face and, and telling me that I'm an idiot. I want to have pure love for that, for that person and be able to do it from such a way that is just automatic. Like I would love to be able to do that. So that's something that I can change. We can do that through things like, um, you know, raising our consciousness through eating right, through going out into the sun, through working out, through meditating, through getting good sleep, through um, a million things. There are so many portals to this, right? And the wisdom to know the difference between the two things because there are times when we fear things that we have zero control over, right? Like right now, there are some things that we have control over. Wash your hands, don't go to a concert, don't <laughs> no concerts going on, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's some basic things we can change. And then there's those things that we can't change. So according to the serenity prayer, right, for those things, we should allow those to go and allow those to be and not be concerned with those things and to know the difference between the two, right? Okay. Check out Authentic Happiness by Martin uh, Seligman. Yes. Uh, good sleep. Yep. Long have I hoped to have good night's sleep. Luke Kern, I'll tell you a couple things that have helped me, a couple things that I can actually mention here on YouTube. One of those things is melatonin, which is a natural substance that your brain produces, but apparently we lack it as we get older, so there, there's a pill form of this. It's not a drug uh, any more than maybe water is. Uh, Scott Willis, thank you so much for the donation, my friend. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's helped me a ton. Meditation has helped me a ton. Red light therapy, you can buy these for like 20 bucks off of uh, Amazon. Ruby Lux, get those lights that you, can, that you can hang over your bed. Do that before bed. Meditation, going to bed at the right time every single night, going to bed at the same time every night, and also not getting too much sleep. So if you end up laying in the bed for nine hours, you probably could tolerate just laying in bed for eight hours or seven hours or six and a half hours. Find out what your what your special place is there and I promise you, you'll sleep so much better. Uh, I know this because I've lived both ways. Right now I'm not. Right now I'm laying in bed like eight, nine hours. I shouldn't be. And I felt it big time this morning and I said, buddy, you got to get back on your routine because it's not working. Okay. No tech one hour before bed. Yeah, Base, uh, best baseline ever, money, right? Yeah, this is one that I that I was uh, doing in um, on my Instagrams right before this, right? Um, But 
you got, you got the idea, right? Uh, that I used to be an addict. No, I don't think I have a very addictive personality. Um, and I don't like the word addict. I, I know that there's uh, probably lots of addict, uh, addicts that are watching and I, I do that because I don't like to use that word. But then again, I haven't been in a place where an addict has been that I, that I know of. Uh, so I don't know. I understand why it is an AA. You say, hey, I'm an addict is because it's that humility and it makes me, it chokes me up actually uh, because, um, because I get that idea of just being humble and being broken to something that might be, that might could take control of your life. And if you're doing that for your family and yourself and your, and the world, then by all means call yourself an addict if that keeps you from, from doing a particular something and keeps you in the zone. So uh, I don't want to be a person to, to say that. Uh, but I also like the idea of being recovered and at the same time saying, you know, I know you, stay away from me, you're not good for me, and I'm going to keep away from you uh, with a conscious mind because you're slippery slope. And I get that idea. But I don't think I've been, I don't think I have an addictive personality. I've never, I don't have any proof that I am or in my life, my 50 years that I've been here, I have it, you know. Why we sleep, a lot of new science and some recommendations. Uh, why we sleep, Bill Gates recommended a pretty good book, Why We Sleep. Well, okay, hmm, I'll have to check that out. Do I have a special bass amp, seeing cheap basses and wondering if my tiny amp can handle it? Yeah, so I'm running through a Boss Katana right now. I don't have a specific bass amp. I just have a Boss Katana. Uh, I just brought it up from the, from the basement and put it on a clean sound. So I don't have a specific one, you know. Ah, Evan, yes, I'm addicted to guitar, indeed. <laughs> Just play the Aeolian mode, which is the minor scale, by the way. Bill Gates is a murderer. Maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Bill Gates is intriguing in that way. I don't know what to say about him. I don't know. Lots of opinions about the guy. How's a fretless bass play? Do you search for each note you play? No frets to use as crutches, grin. So, so a fretless instrument, like a violin or a cello or a bass, you know, um, a fretless bass doesn't have frets. On the classical instruments, they don't even have markers. On like rock instruments and stuff, they'll typically have a marker there, like a line, so you have a basic idea of where you're at. When you're, when you're learning violin or cello or something, usually they'll put some lines there to give you a basic idea. But yeah, you're, it's, you're really memorizing on the neck and then also you're adjusting as you're going along, your intonation. Um, so, so basically, you, you learn the technique, you learn the intonation part of it, you know? Tony said Gates owns the patent. Yeah, maybe. I, you know, I know there's lots of lots of talk going around. I I, I won't repeat anything unless I know because I don't. There's so much talk, right? And some of it's true and some of it's not. A lot of it's not. So I don't like to repeat anything unless I know. I wouldn't want to disparage someone's name without knowing. And I mean that. I don't. I don't have an opinion on it. I just don't know. Being honest. Can bass guitars blow out guitar amps very easily? I don't know about that. Uh, my guess would be if you turned it up really loud, you, you're talking about frequencies that probably could damage a speaker, especially if you're poppy, because you're talking about real percussive, uh, you're talking about percussive notes that possibly could break the cone. I've broken cones and speakers before by getting too loud, so I think it's probably I think that's probably true, you know. <laughs> Are you trying to get our minds on the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself? I didn't say that. How to get a bass sounding a bass sound using a guitar, turn the tone knob all the way down. You know, you want a clean tone, but no, a bass is uh, is an octave lower than than the guitar strings. The the four lowest guitar strings, it's one octave lower. So yes, you can get that tone, but you're not gonna get the actual notes that a bass would provide, okay? Okay. 
All right, friends, I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go another three minutes here. I think we're gonna call it uh, short today here. Uh, number one, because not a, lot of ton not a lot of folks are watching, and then the other bit is it's really, really sunny, and I really, really wanna get out there with my family. That's the true reason. Uh, but I wanna continue to talk with you I think we're gonna have more folks that show up tomorrow. I guess not a lot of people wanted to learn bass today. That's okay. I wanna I wanna change up change it up for you guys so that we can learn something new every day. And hopefully tomorrow my wife can join me and we can talk about songwriting a bit. Okay. Which is better to start on a short or long scale bass? I would start on a long scale bass. You just like you know basic like precision or jazz bass because that's what you're gonna have most of the time. So that's what I would start off with. What is the best guitar tuning app? I love Guitar Tuna, T-U-N-A. It's one word, Guitar Tuna. I love it. Can uh, I can switch the A minor later for a sad moment before bringing it back to happy? Yes. Am I related to Chuck Barris from The Gong Show? I'm not, but why do you ask that? Because I feel like someone has asked me that before, and I look nothing like the guy or talk like him that I know of. But I remember that guy, I was a kid. I was a kid when I, when I watched that. So yeah, let me know what you mean by that, Kirk. Am I related to Chuck Barris? Uh, I played one year, I played one year, my amp starting, starting with the tubes, not warmed up. I didn't wait for them to warm up. Did this damage bad my tube amp? I don't think so. I don't. I honestly can't answer that though. I don't know enough about that. Transition from four to five string bass. Any suggestions? It's the same thing. It's just now you have a B string, so I wouldn't think about it too much. It's like if you have to play a note on that string, then you play a note on that string. Don't overthink it. Please uh, go be with your family. Thank you for allowing us to, to get off track. Uh, mostly thank you for being real. Oh, you're so welcome. It's the only way to be. Are bass players failed guitarists? Okay. All right. We're heading out, my friend. We've got a minute here. Let's head out. If you would, please, before we go... Uh, like this and also thumbs up or li like this and also share this with a friend if you know that they want to play bass, okay? Tomorrow, join me. We're going to do a premiere for The Killers, the top riffs from The Killers, one of my favorite bands. You're going to enjoy this if you like The Killers. And then we're also going to do another live broadcast tomorrow, hopefully with my wife, where we're going to talk about songwriting. She's written several hit songs. If, you, if you're a fan of country music, chances are you know some of her songs, okay? So at 12 o'clock, thank you, Emmy, for reminding me. 12 noon tomorrow, Central Time, Friday, YouTube. That's where we're going to be doing this, okay? And then we're going to do a live... Uh, I'm saying after that, I think maybe around one o'clock is when we'll do the live tomorrow. So different time tomorrow, I think is what we said, okay? All right, love you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting real with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thumbs up, share this with a friend. I'll see you.